faithful dog, Freddy, gnaws on my slippers as I wrestle with the question gnawing at me. Why exactly did I write about the people I wrote about? I mean, something must have drawn me toward the subjects I'd picked, right? The more I considered what that something was, the more I discovered some surprising connections, personal connections that I hadn't noticed from 37,000 feet or at the lunch counter at Mel's. Invariably, These connections began to rhyme, and soon the mosaic began to change. The grout and the tiles became equally important. How many times did I look up from my laptop, only to see that the fire had gone out, the dog was asleep, the fog was gone, and the moon was right where the sun had been shining just moments ago? Too many to count. You've already met Freddy, and you'll run across him again in the hours to come. He's a good boy. You'll meet my parents, my girlfriend, and my high school mentor. There will be ghosts and pigs, farmers and fishermen, movie stars, presidents, Nazis, and bloody do-gooders, along with the fictitious knight errant upon whom my entire world view was once based. Along the way, you'll hear stories about dirty jobs and a long list of less notable shows that still haunt me on YouTube, shows I've tried to forget but cannot. In all cases, each story is told the way I heard it. If you've heard it differently, I'm okay with that, and I hope you are too. By the way, I'm trying to picture you too. Is that creepy? I hope not. I see you checking into some quaint bed and breakfast in Oregon, maybe, or Texas, or even in England or France. You've arrived late, worn out from your journey. You've built a fire and slipped into bed. This book dog-eared and stained, just happens to be the one lying on your bedside table. You pick it up, you start to read, and when you look up, the fog is gone, the fire is out, and there's the sun, right where the moon was just moments ago. You wonder where the night went. On Monday morning at the water cooler, you might share one of these stories with a friend. They'll probably raise an eyebrow and say, wow, Is that really the way it happened? If I were you, I'd say, you better believe it. At least, that's the way I heard it. Chapter 1. This Isn't Funny Corporal Kaminsky was precariously perched atop a makeshift utility pole, 40 feet above the frozen ground. In the dim light of a crescent moon, He squinted to complete his task and tried not to lose his battle with gravity. As a member of the 1104th Engineer Combat Group, Kaminsky was used to such work. What he was not used to was doing it so close to the enemy. You see, this particular pole to which this particular corporal clung was planted in Belgium, specifically in the Ardennes Forest, just through the trees A big chunk of the German army was preparing to launch an enormous offensive that would be remembered forever as the Battle of the Bulge. They were so close, Kaminsky could smell them, an odorous stew of gasoline, bratwurst, and boiled cabbage filled his nostrils. He could hear them, too. They'd been playing propaganda recordings all night long, an unholy mix of the German national anthem, the latest ravings of the Mad Fuhrer, and the sweet voice of Axis Sally, urging our boys to lay down their guns and surrender. As he twisted the last wire around the last screw that would carry the current to a slightly different broadcast, he heard a harsh whisper from the sentry below him. This isn't funny, Kaminsky! That made the young corporal smile. If there was one thing he'd learned growing up on the mean streets of Brooklyn, it was this. Whenever anyone said, That's not funny. It was almost always certain to be hilarious. Kaminsky shimmied down the pole, took one last glance up at the enormous loudspeaker he'd just installed, and chuckled. The sentry shook his head as Kaminsky scurried back to battalion command. Along the way, he stepped around numerous foxholes filled with exhausted and freezing G.I.s. Their spirits needed a lift, and by God, He was just the soldier to do the job. Kaminsky searched through a small box of vinyl 78.